Hey, my name is Ed Nagelhout. I'm a professor in the English department. I do rhetoric and writing studies. And so writing groups are something that I'm really always interested in. I participated in all kinds of different writing groups. And so hopefully we can have some conversations about possibilities for you to use writing groups effectively for yourself and for the others in your group. And I'm Lori Johnson. I'm an associate professor in the law school. And I teach particularly legal writing and research as my area of expertise. And so I also have used a lot of workshopping and writing group uh, strategies in the past. And I'm currently using them as I am pre-tenured and working toward uh, fulfilling my scholarly requirements myself. And so I have some recent um, experience with some of the pros and cons and the different types of writing groups and what's worked better for me uh, and to kind of think about how to help you make those same determinations about which type of writing group might be the best for you. Happy to be here. So what we want to try and do, is we decided to break it up into three separate little sections. Um, we're going to begin, Lori's going to talk about goal setting. We'll have some little work for you to do, uh, maybe some invention kinds of activities about your own goals for writing groups. We'll talk, that'll be the first group if we have, I mean, if it's just us here, we can have converse, we can have a larger conversation or we can break up into smaller groups and exchange that way. Uh, the second part of this, we want to talk about different types of writing groups. We want you to think creatively about what kinds of groups you might use and what you're trying to accomplish, what you hope a writing group will help you accomplish. And then the final section will be uh, some strategies, some tools. Again, it'll just be building a lot on our discussion in the second section, what are ways that we can, ways that you can um, be the most successful and use the writing group for your best benefit. Yes, so I'm gonna start with the goal setting portion because of course, in order to determine whether a writing group will work for you, what type of writing group might work best for you, it's important first to identify how to set goals and then using some goal setting strategies, start to determine your own set of goals, both um, long-term and short-term, uh, so you can configure the best kind of writing support network for you. So I wanna talk, and this might be review for some of you who were here previously at the um, panel we had last week about writing productivity, but these are uh, also important because writing groups are geared toward increasing writing productivity. So when I think about my writing, I have come to determine that I need to be very thoughtful about setting goals. And I'm sorry, we're gonna switch out a cord here on the computer, so I'm gonna stop for just a moment and pick back up in a second. Oh, no, now I'm going to this one right? I'm not sure. Is this the what you wanted? Sorry. Um. We're we're adjusting some tech. Yeah, it looks like we're we good. good. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, when you're thinking about setting goals, uh, and this applies uh, particularly to, um, we're going to talk about it in terms of scholarly writing today, but can apply to any kind of uh, large project that you have. I like to use the SMART method, which is Paul Meyer's goal setting method, and it relates to goals uh, being specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and timely. And so with regard to scholarly writing, you can look at those goals in a big picture way. Uh, so large long-term goals, and then in a smaller way with regard to interim or short-term goals. Um, if we're attempting to use the SMART method to set what our goals are going to be, if we think about large long-term goals, rather than saying something like, I wanna write an article that's 35 pages in length uh, and cites these particular scholars, that's not specific enough for it to be a workable goal. And that's not going to help you sort of determine what type of feedback you'll need along the way from your writing group or what type of writing group it is that you'll want. 
So the more specific and measurable way to give that goal is to say, I'm going to dedicate two hours, three times a week toward working on this particular project. Uh, that can help you think about, again, which type of writing group is best for you, how you want to structure your writing group once you're in one. Uh, word counts are another way of making that uh, specific, measurable, achievable type of goal. Some people work well with word counts, some don't, but thinking about specificity in your goal setting uh, in terms of taking a larger project and thinking of it in terms of measurable steps. Thinking on a smaller scale, if you're talking about the day-to-day -day writing, that you do saying things like, I'm going to write every day after I finish teaching and grading and my committee work and all these other obligations that I have. That's not an attainable goal um, or an achievable goal in most cases. And so saying something like, I'm going to write for 15 minutes each day while my paper is in progress uh, is a better way of goal setting so that you can feel the benefit of that achievement. And that's one of the things we'll talk about when we get into the types of writing groups and how we can design writing groups. There are big benefits to having attainable goals because you've got that sense of uh, progress, achievement, and reward that can be helpful. Um, so what's important about goal setting is then thinking about how you're going to utilize other people. And so we're going to be utilizing other people through our writing group process to help us in various ways. We can utilize, and we'll talk about this in, in uh, part two, is what you struggle with uh, in your goal setting, finding someone to give you enough feedback, or do you write well and get projects done uh, as long as you have accountability to other people? And that's something to think about. But research has found that the most productive writers uh, or writers achieve their goals most frequently when they do take advantage of other people and uh, recruit others to assist them to keep them on track with their goals in whatever sense that is. Uh, another way to motivate is to, within your group, set specific goals. And you can either align those goals with others in your group or all be working towards different goals in ways that are complementary to each other. And so that's something we can talk about. I tend to think that writing groups work best when everyone has both a long-term goal and then smaller incremental goals as well. And so I think what we'd like to do at this point is take a few minutes and sort of each think about or have each of you think about why you're here today, why you're thinking about joining a writing group, and then what your long-term goal, uh, you know, your end product result uh, should be, and then what your short-term measurable and attainable strategies thus far have been uh, have, do you tend to write for two hours a day? Or do you write a certain word count? Uh, do you lean on others to make you accountable in that or do you not? So let's first think about goal setting in terms of our larger project. What is the large project? And uh, thinking about making it something specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. Long-term goal. And then thinking about shorter term goals, maybe something we can achieve within the parameters of the 10 weeks remaining in this semester in terms of a smart goal, an attainable goal for short term. So if we all take a few minutes and think about that, then I think what we can start to do is identify who in the room has similar goals and then start to think about ways to organize or help you to go back to your own department or unit and organize uh, writing groups from there. So why don't we take a few minutes and think about our goals and then we can some well, insight. I mean, before we move into sure, this yeah, next of course, or, or section, guidance. I mean, I, I'm interested in, based on your writing goals, why do you want to join a writing group? Okay, I mean, it sounds like a lot of individual kind of isolated goals in some respects. Write at 930, write it. So what, what would be the best possible outcome for your involvement in a and so this, would, this is, to me, is important because part of successful writing groups are always about transparency and setting goals as a group. So what, what, do, what about that? I would be interested in having a writing group that is um, within the same field or closely related so that we have multiple publishing opportunities and we can work together and have different authorship. But also 
So for me, um, the being accountable works for me because otherwise I don't. I'm not accountable to myself most of the time because I say, okay, I'm gonna write half an hour each day, I'm like an hour, and then I <coughs> get in get in my students, emails, or other things, teaching tab, and that kind of thing. But when I report to a group and when I see them like struggling or like talking about writing, I also or like writing at night or writing in, in very early, but I get motivated and I write too. And I realize even though I, I write half an hour, I think about it and I, I reach out to other people to generate more ideas, write things, submit things. So uh, I tried it for two weeks with a formal writing group and it worked out very well, but I don't do it on my own. Yeah, to me it's like an appointment, right? And you show up and that's the first thing. I think showing up is a key thing. And so, you know, I, I you know, I've worked with a partner before and it worked really well. And you know, but we, we got so busy with school, her our teaching responsibility. So, but it's yeah, for me it's, it's like an appointment. I do make make great blocks of time too, but sometimes oh a student emails me and there's a crisis and so all that stuff. So the writing kind of get underway on the back burner. Mm -hmm. And I feel the same way that things always come up where um, you feel like better that they have to take presence over the morning. So I need some accountability, but I also need I also want to enjoy writing and discussing, but also meeting with uh, with others in my own field, because then you can bounce ideas back and forth, and then of course you can work collaboratively on, on new ideas. Right. So there are a lot of reasons. How about over there? You didn't know workout unmuting us. <laughs> okay. I really, I don't, I missed the name of the woman who was just speaking about um, having somebody to bounce ideas off of. Um, I think that that is kind of a, a big part of my process. I think sometimes when I'm sitting in a room by myself, I'm like, what was I doing again? Right? But if I have somebody else to, to kind of talk it through, then the ideas really develop. And I think that sense of community is really important to me. Community is a really nice word, actually. To, to frame it. And what type of community do you want to be in thinking about it that way? Yeah. Yeah. So I certainly, um, you know, like we talked about before, like the accountability part, but also um, someone to say yes and, right? Like, yes and how do we make it bigger? Yes and how do we make it national? So I think um, having to do that piece is important. Yeah, I mean, I was just thinking about kind of what you said. I feel like there's two parts to what I want out of the writing group. Like, I want, I, on one side, like, there are some things I just need accountability on. I don't necessarily need, like, a bunch of eyes because I'm working on a research team or, you know, I'm working on something where I might have those eyes in those other places. And so I need, like, the accountability of, did you get your, did you get your stuff done? <laughs> and then on the flip side, there's stuff where I do need that creative piece of that, like, walking through, talking about it, maybe talking about the method section or how we do this or one of the things I get really excited about is just when I work like interdisciplinary is to kind of see how people uh, approach methodology differently because it is so different. Qualitative research to me probably looks a lot different than somebody else. And so I like kind of having those conversations. So I, I feel like it's kind of like a three. And then of course like the editing part, which is always the, the difficulty that we have is that if you want a writing group that's based in your discipline, and we can talk about strategies for going out and building one. Um, with through Marianne, as a general approach to writing groups, you'd have to be, or you may have to be interested in your disciplinary kind of groups. And so there are advantages and disadvantages to that. Um, and as Lori will talk about, there are meeting groups, which are accountability groups where you just meet to write. And that's, so that's one strategy. And so if you can find a group, for example, that meets every Monday at 9.30 or every morning at 9.30, then that creates a space and a, and a, and a, um, a date and a time that you can sit down with folks and you're accountable in those ways. 
You can also think about writing groups in terms of, of you know, in terms of your discipline, but I like to think about writing groups in terms of process. So are you looking for a writing group? And again, for me, interdisciplinary writing groups have always worked well at the front end. And so if I'm planning and I want to meet with my writing group and talk about just planning for my ideas and what that might lead to and how that might lead to a particular set of articles or a path of research, uh, I've always gotten really good feedback in those kinds of ways. I think, again, it's important for you to be um, reflective and have a set of goals in terms of you know what you're trying to accomplish. If you are, if you want the goal to be feedback, interdisciplinary groups can work that way as well, where you can get feedback in different kinds of ways. Um, and I'll talk in the next one about what's required that the writer directs the feedback. The writer directs what they're trying to to accomplish. And so you can set up groups in, in, in those kinds of ways so that you can talk about per drafts at certain stages. So maybe you have an early draft or just an outline you want to get feedback on, you know, for its coherence or its consistency in some ways. You might not get the same kind of feedback from a, as you would from a disciplinary colleague, but you can always get the feedback from a kind of rational perspective because you have an educated reader Anyone who would participate in this group on campus would be an educated reader to be able to provide you feedback in those kinds of ways as well. I mean, the kind of questions that I always want to ask when it comes to thinking about writing groups are, you know, what parts do you need help with? Do you need help with all parts of the process? So, for example, I don't know, um, in nursing, I know some of you have labs, and those labs generate different kinds of writing at different kinds of times. And also um, that you don't have the same kinds of planning that you might necessarily need. I mean, you've already got MRAD set up and so you can create different sections at different kinds of times. Do you need help with, with ideas? Do you need help with getting something set up? Or do you want feedback at the revision stage? Or do you want feedback at say the final product, the editing stage? Um, again, those by having those time that time frame set up, that schedule set up, you can contribute your piece and say, "I just need, I want a close edit on it to make sure you know, the language is right and the commas are correct." And and or you might say, "I just want to make sure my arguments are holding together." And so again, by dictating that, you can get feedback at, at different kinds of times and use your writing groups in different kinds of ways. Now, again, you can have a general writing group that will do all these things, or you can try and have you know, very specific, a, a writing group that does very specific kinds of things. Um, again, part of the difficulty that we have right now is we don't have a large pool at this point, but we're hoping that you know, a pool will grow so that people will be able to interact and engage in different kinds of ways. And talk about um, you know, your success with... Yeah, so... Yeah, I can. So my, um, I think speaking to that problem that we're facing in that many of us are at different points in the process. So I guess here we've got two problems, not problems, two issues to think about. We're interdisciplinary. Uh, but even when I'm sitting in the law school with my colleagues, we're vastly interdisciplinary as well. Um, I write about a particular type of legal practice and strategies uh, and the applicability of rhetoric and narrative in that particular field. It's a very narrow area, right? Um, I have colleagues who write about health law and drug courts and jury pools and I mean just vast arrays of things. So even in, within your own college, you can have educated readers who are in a diverse ideological area or particular field. What has been helpful for me and what I've had the most success with, um, with regard to writing groups are pure accountability. Pure accountability groups, that, that means space and time. There is psychological studies and data that show that working together, even in the physical presence of others, uh, can increase your productivity. Um, sharing goals with others can increase your likelihood of achieving that goal by up to 33%. Um, 
public declarations of goals, right? Either motivate or shame us into achieving those goals. And so I've done accountability writing groups in sort of two different ways. When I say accountability, I mean sitting down with a group who all have a project in some phase. Um, we need not all be in or near the same phase, outline phase, nearing final draft, but having dedicated time and space and then sharing with that group your goals for each week or two weeks, however frequently you get to meet. And our, sort of in our third portion of the, um, the workshop, we'll think about what are those decisions, right? So each group has to make decisions about how frequently they'll meet, uh, that type of thing. But if you have a set space uh, and a, a set amount of time in between each meeting, you can say, I am hoping to accomplish X amount or I intend to accomplish X amount. You come together, you share your success or failure with regard to meeting that goal. And then you sit physically proximal to each other and write and work. That for me has been a huge boost in terms of avoiding the isolation that I think the academy brings. Um, by way of my background, I came from a law firm setting where there are people everywhere, there are deadlines everywhere. You are never alone for a minute uh, to the academy where it can feel very isolating. And so having just a group that sits on Friday afternoons for two hours in our faculty lounge and writes with each other has helped me to stay focused, has helped me to have that block of time on my calendar where you can say, no, I'm in group. Uh, this is a meeting. It takes just as much precedent, if not more, as all of my other meetings and committee requirements. Uh, and it has helped me psychologically with um, the motivation. When I see others succeed, I want to strive for that success. Um, on the other side of the coin, when you're struggling, I think as we talked about that before, having someone to build you up is helpful. Within those groups, you can have things like reward, right? If the group accomplishes X, the group goes for pizza or drinks or coffee or whatnot. If you accomplish your goals, you um, watch that episode of you know, Game of Thrones you've been saving on your DVR. But you can also use those strategies in a, in a negative way. If I don't accomplish my goal, I said this in the last uh, session, I'm gonna donate $1 to a, an organization that I particularly dislike. And there's a group that's gonna hold you accountable for that, like the money jar, kind of like the swear jar, almost, if you can think about it that way. Um, so I've done that over longer periods of time, perhaps an entire summer or an entire semester weekly. The other way I've done that is in a retreat format. And I found that very effective as well. I went to Denver for a scholarly accountability retreat. We were all writing, we were all at different phases, but we could, we, we came together once or twice a day and talked about where we were, what we had accomplished on our, each of our individual projects that day. And then we went back to our writing, but all in the same house, in the same cabin, proximate to each other. Uh, the psychological benefits of that for me were really helpful. But of course that doesn't, work for people who feel as though they want the specific feedback. Of course, all educated readers can read for clarity, can read for grammar, can read for proofing, uh, look at organizational structure, give you that kind of feedback. But when it comes to specific, I have not been in a writing group that has been, that has given specific substantive feedback to each other uh, on that level, but I have found that pure accountability has worked really well for me um, to accomplish my goals. The, the downside of that is you do then have to reach out, uh, reach outside of your group if you do want and need, and of course everyone does, that substantive reader. You need to know other people in your field who write specifically about what you write about and who you trust uh, to read drafts. And so if you have that, accountability can work really well for you. And it's, it's worked wonders um, for me. And so I am hoping to have a Friday afternoon accountability group. If there's anyone who wants to join me, just let me know. Um, and we can go from there and I'll recruit some law colleagues as well for that. But I think that that, just that psychological boost is really helpful uh, for, for anyone. So it's a, a little exercise. What I would like each of you to do is list three to five things that you think would describe the ideal group situation for you. And then respond to this prompt. If a group is going to work together successfully, everyone really needs to So three to five things that describe the ideal 
situation for you, whether I do or I do for you, and then what would you expect from others in the group? What, are, what expectations would you have? Um, policies and procedures for how to keep track of folks' attendance, productivity, uh, and, and their um, progress toward their goals, or do we keep track? Um, and again, these are all decisions that a group can make. So when we can find a sort of set of like-minded folks to come together, a lot of these tips and strategies and decisions are things that the group can agree upon. But if I had to say there were sort of um, some commandments for an accountability group, they would be um, rotating the leadership structure in terms of fairness, having set physical space and set time uh, once that's agreed upon, having policies for keeping track of attendance and productivity. Those I think are my uh, one more, having limitations on uh, thoughts and limitations on the sharing and exchanging of drafts. If folks are not comfortable, if this is a pure accountability group, we don't want it to shift into sharing drafts um, with the whole group, unless the whole group's comfortable. So it's, it goes to that shared governance. But those, I think, would be my biggest takeaways uh, or biggest um, strategical ideas for forming that accountability group. I really would echo Ed's point about fading because groups, I mean, and that's just the nature of life, right? Folks either will leave the university or they'll, they'll make tenure and not have as demanding of a writing schedule or, or this and that, but um, trying to maintain cohesion in a group is a really important thing that is a responsibility that should be shared. Yeah, I mean, and I would definitely suggest maybe the first meeting is just spent planning and getting, coming to, agreement on the parameters. So you might ask how often you're going to meet, for how long, where you're going to meet, will you communicate between meetings and how will you do that? Um, so, and then if you have submission, you have to decide who's going to submit and when, are people going to, is it going to be a regular rotation or are people going to submit as things come up? Um, what kinds of reading, what kind of writing, and the same thing with the submission group. If you're submitting stuff and getting feedback, what is an appropriate length? I mean, I don't want to be in a writing group that meets once a week and get 80 pages at a time. You know, if you meet once a week, is it one person at a time? Does everybody contribute each time you meet? If you meet once a month, does everybody contribute? Those are the kinds of submission practices you want to know what is appropriate. What is, is there something that's too little? Is it, not worth my time to only look at a couple of paragraphs or and you know somebody submit two paragraphs for feedback in different kinds of ways. Again, writer in charge, what kind of feedback do you want? Um, how do you how will you respond to each other? Do you respond on paper, do you respond electronically? Um, and you know again as far as submissions goes, I mean that's the primary writing group that I've done because I can't do accountability groups, sit down and write with people because I just, I, I'm, I'm, I get too distracted. <laughs> no matter what, I, it's ADD or something, but I just, I, I just can't write that way. If I try and write for two hours, I don't need to write for three. So I'm much better doing about eight different things at a time. So if I show up to a, show up to an accountability group, that's what I end up doing, doing those eight different things. And I might get my hundred words in or um, but again, you have to figure out, I mean, that's the most important piece of advice if, with writing groups is know what, how you want to use this so that you can be the most productive writer possible. I mean, there's no other reason to do it other than this will make me more productive. Um, because if, if, it, if you don't do it for that, uh, you know, my Catholic mother is always in my head. It's just another form of guilt if I don't do it to be productive. I mean, it's just to be productive. It's for no other reason other than, oh, I really think I should do this, or I feel like I'm compelled to do this because then, you know, I miss and I feel guilty and stuff. So uh, it's guilt really important Guilt for me for is a great, well, I have a Catholic mother too, so <laughs> guilt for me is a great motivator. I actually oh, think that's why I have the accountability group. Because if I'm not there and they're there writing, I should be there too. So that's yeah. yeah there's certain places where guilt is. 
Yeah. With the writing, I, I, yeah. I'm self-motivated enough, I guess. Yeah. That I don't I, and it know. just, I, I think that understanding yourself and whether you're self-motivated or group or peer motivated, I think is the, the first initial sort of question you need to ask to determine, you know, which of the two types of groups work better for you. Uh, writing on your own and sharing in a group setting or sitting in a group setting to get the writing done. And then don't be afraid to think about multiple groups. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can use multiple groups in different kinds of ways. You can use a general accountability or pure accountability group that's interdisciplinary, that's other folks from campus that meets on a regular basis just to write together and then have another writing group within your department or within your discipline where you are um, sharing with people and again, meeting on a regular basis. We all have to write at regular, we all write on at regular times and so a writing group can be part of that, part of that schedule. And I think, again, for me, it's all about having, having that schedule, having that time. I'm going to have so much time that I got to work on things. Um, but the final thing that I think is also as important is to think about how do you let, how do members of the group let each other know if things aren't working for them? Do you have some kind of mechanism or a regular time, maybe, every two months or something we go okay how are things working for everybody because again groups fade when people don't feel like they're getting what they need or they and sometimes those are really easy fixes um, sometimes you set up expectations and you have to adjust those expectations and it's a, it's always a good idea to take a step back and reflect with each other and say okay are you getting what you need and everybody might say yeah this is great let's keep doing this and that will help with the long term because you have to think about this as a long And I think one final thing, and we're preaching to the choir here because you're here getting this information and reaching out uh, to use these university resources, but it would be to utilize all the resources that you have and even push yourself outside of what's uh, you know, being provided to you. So the university is helping uh, you through this workshop learn how to facilitate a group. Um, so take the initiative to do that, but beyond that, if, as Ed said, maybe two different types of groups would work for you, an accountability group here on campus, interdisciplinary to write, but you're still lacking that feedback that you need in your particular discipline. If you're not getting it uh, through your department, you, you know, reach out for mentorship, reach out across your discipline, reach out um, regionally, nationally. Don't be afraid uh, to make that ask for a reader. The worst thing they can say is, is no. Of course, be thoughtful about that. Be thoughtful about who your readers are, but use the resources that are available to you. And sometimes you even have to reach beyond that a little bit uh, to get what you need, what it is you need to produce, to be productive and then to produce quality writing, which is what of course the goal, the goal is here, so.